Hello and welcome to today's episode of Everyday Woman here on KTN Home and we are so glad you are tuned in to today's episode. My name is Yusta Segete. Our guest today is a virtual assistant. She is also a trainer, a mentor and a coach in this field. She has done this for so many years now. Well, she tells me when you are a beginner, you earn $3 per hour. But of course, things get better with time and you earn an upward of $20. $25 per hour. I have so many questions to Patricia Wanjiru Mwangi and uh, I'm glad to engage her and uh, she is going to tell us more about it. How's your year been so far as a virtual assistant? As a virtual assistant, it has been, the year has been great. Mm -hmm. uh, as a trainer and coach, it has scaled so much I, in a way that I didn't expect. So I'm just happy to to be able to juggle being a trainer and also doing the work itself. Okay, first yes. things first, who's yes. a virtual assistant? A virtual assistant is someone who provides admin assistance uh, remotely to companies, most of them are abroad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what we do, we do email management, calendar management, uh, light project management, we also do e-commerce, we do lead generation, yeah, mm -hmm. so many other small, small things that uh, busy people, busy uh, professionals or business people are not able to keep up with. But yeah. before we get to the depth of what being a VA means and how it comes about, we mm -hmm. want to know a little bit about yourself. How was it like growing up? Uh, probably tell us one of the greatest childhood memories you've had. It was nice. It was my mom always made sure we create memories to the best of our ability. Yeah. I remember we are those people who could not lack going to the show, going to the circus. Anytime there was an event, mom made sure she bought new dresses for us and we show up to the event. Uh, well, has that translated to anything that you are doing currently? Uh, I think uh, from that I learned that I've I, I am one person who likes experimenting in novelty. I like, I'm excited by new things. Mm -hmm. And up to today, I think it has also shaped, it has shaped me because I find that I'm excited to face on, you know, new, new roles, new challenges. It excites me. I think it was because of every time I was expecting we are going to, there's a circus in town, there is, we are going to the uh, game park. My dad was working in the hotel industry, so, and was in the, the hotel was in the park. So when we don't have any, any plan, mom made sure that we have gone to the park. Could you also say the same way you had the exposure of uh, enjoying all this? Mm -hmm. uh, probably you also had the exposure of interacting with the internet or, um, you know, different equipments for you to actually uh, get to do what you're doing today. Uh, at that time, no. I came to, to uh, interact with especially computers after I finished Form 4. That was the first time I, I interacted with a computer. Mm -hmm. And I, have n I did not go to any computer school. Uh, when I finished my Form 4, I joined my dad where he was working, but I was a trainee. So uh, one, of the, uh, one of the seasons, I had to go to the accounts office. It was the first time we handled a, <laughs> a computer. Yeah. I got to learn so much from that experience that it, I kept building up on it. I kept building up on it. And then I could read the newspapers that people were working with internet. The people were working, they are sitting by the computer the whole day, and that's the way they're earning a living. And I'm thinking, wow, that, that's nice. Because, you know, in the hotel industry, you, yeah. you hardly ever get to sit behind a computer. You're either interacting with guests or cleaning up, or, you know, there's always something to be done, but not sitting down with a computer. Yeah. So later when I went to college, after my internship, my trainee, my trainee period finished at uh, the hotel, I went to Tali. Mm -hmm. So that is when I also built up on my computer uh, knowledge. So at this time you're working as um, an accountant or what had you um, schooled for? No, mm -hmm. uh, I went to the accounts section but I went to the food and beverage control section okay. because I was not an, uh, an, account train, an accounts trainee, I was uh, a more of a hotel side trainee. 
on an operations trainee. Yeah. So, but I had to go through all the departments for them to give me a recommendation to go to Tali. So then what happened? How did you bounce back to um, finishing whatever you were doing or probably plugging yourself somewhere else to earn a living? Okay, I never really went back. Yeah. I, I tried for every year f since I think 20, for almost five years. Every t reapplying, 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 they rejected, rejected, they, they kept rejecting. So uh, at, at some point I gave up and I moved to the coast. Mm -hmm. I moved, my dad now was working in the coast, so I moved there with him, uh, to him. Uh, and then I started, I got into the hotel industry. Uh, my dad was in Malindi. So you know in Malindi, Watamu, uh, there's a lot of Italians. Yeah. So, despite that, in Utali I had done front office for that one year, I could not do front office in Watamu because I don't know Italian. Okay. Yeah, so I went to the, uh, to the, to the house, not housekeeping, uh, restaurant. Yeah, so I trained in rest, uh, being a, rest, a waitress, mm -hmm. and I also became one of the best a la carte waitresses. Wow. And it, it was also very fun for me, interacting with, you know, I like new things, so every time I'm meeting new people, yeah. you know, you know, it was so good, but the the uh, the pay was not very good, and by then I had two children, mm -hmm. so I had to think of something else. And then you know, in Watamu, it's very seasonal. Yeah, so mm -hmm. sometimes there are guests, sometimes the hotels are closed down. Yeah. So I had to think of something that is going to sustain me, mm -hmm. and that is how I started that a tours and travel business. All right. Yeah. So you started your tour for how long had you done it, and then of course, um, how was it like for you, and how then did you find yourself on this other side, where you're a VA? Okay. After I did the the tours. Uh, uh, for about three to four years, yeah. and then I moved from Otamu to Mtuapa. I continued with the, with the tours, but at some point, uh, I started uh, reading about online work, online work, app work. So I, I and there was a group on Facebook that was very active about online work. So I kept following what they are saying. Oh, you know, you can you can actually earn as a virtual assistant. At first, I only knew about writing, and I tried writing and nothing I could not write so finally when I discovered there was I, I could actually offer my services as a virtual assistant mm -hmm. uh, and they said that you can oh, you, they were advising you can create an account on Upwork and then you can get clients mm -hmm. and then one of the very active guys in that group was mentioned he was giving guidelines this is what you do for you to get a client for you to get the client's attention do this this that is all the knowledge I had so did you sign up for the training or you're just reading off the page, uh, the Facebook page? I didn't sign up for the training. All right. Yeah. I was just reading what they were writing, that free resources that people are just uh, exchanging uh, ideas and mm. all that. Okay. Yeah. So then at what point did you decide that I want to be fully in on this one? Uh, when in the late 2017, my trust business crashed crushed for for reasons fi financially or it was um, more of um, an internal um, kind of issue yeah it was a uh, guest cancellations you know a lot of uncertainty mm -hmm. and we had to refund a lot of clients and then we, we just we didn't have any other source of income okay so I decided you know what I'm creating an account on Upwork so I created an account and it was rejected so I went back to the same group. I told them, uh, I just wrote on the on the on the wall, uh, created an account on Facebook on Upwork, and it was rejected. And then they were like, No, the, so and so is your plug is going to help you. Mm -hmm. So I reached out, and actually my account went live. Wow. Yeah. And at the time, mm -hmm. um, had you learned enough for you to actually open uh, that account, or you're like? I'm going to learn on the go. <laughs> I knew nothing. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't know anything. So then what gives you, gave you the confidence to go ahead and um, have an account? I guess just the desire for discovering new things. And I, 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 I knew that it's whatever skill I will learn. I, I will learn mm -hmm. on the way. And actually we want to know uh, what kind of clients are we talking about? What help is it that people look uh, for, uh, you know, from virtual assistants? The, activi the 
they, there are so many tasks. Yeah. For example, that first client, I was doing purchasing for him. I was purchasing furniture. Mm -hmm. So uh, my work was to go into platforms, look for furniture, and then I make a deal and then send the driver to go and pick it up. All right. Some some other clients want you to do some basic research for them. Others are too busy to handle their emails. Others want to have side hustles in like e-commerce stores, and they want someone to to run the stores for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot you can do. Others, they, there are some clients you can do shopping for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very many activities. And we are going to take a short commercial break. When we are back, you're going to tell us how someone actually works on that, on such kind of tasks virtually. So stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. My name is Yusa Segete and of course today I'm joined by yet another amazing guest and we are talking about virtual assistants. And uh, earlier on she was talking to us about the different tasks that people actually do on this platform. So you are talking to us that uh, you know people can either you can either do um, shopping for them, do e-commerce for them. But how do you source for clients? Okay, we have different platforms. Yeah. Actually, there are very many platforms, mm -hmm. but for me, the ones I teach and the ones I use yeah. are Facebook and Upwork and Fiverr and Instagram. For five years now, you've been doing this. Mm -hmm. How many women have you trained, have you mentored and have you coached? And how is it like for you? Because I was reading um, on your page that you actually interact with these women 12 to 1. That's your burning the midnight oil. Yeah. How does it work? Uh, what we do, mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, first of all, I have uh, taught, so far I've taught about 2,000 women and some men. And uh, out of those 2,000, 500 are already working. Mo uh, some of them full-time, others get a job here, and then, you know, they're flexible. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do, when, once you enroll into our program, uh, you, we first teach you the skills, the skills that you need. So we teach email management, calendar management, uh, project management. Those are tools that you need. And then you do e-commerce. E-commerce we do mostly a platform called Shopify. And then we do CRM, customer relationships management. And we do, uh, we do data protection, mm -hmm. which is very important on, uh, on your working online. Yeah, and then how to use these tools like recording tools, taking screenshots, you know how to record your voice online because clients will have different needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah. What are the requirements to qualify to become a trainer or to join any of the programs? Uh, you, first of all, you have to know English and you have to have basic uh, computer skills. Mm -hmm. Once you have the basic computer skills, uh, then we're able to train you the other skills that you need to work online. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It feels kind of untrue, you know, to get that amount of money per hour. Yes. You know, uh, the believability of mm. people to actually believe that you can earn good money yes. from here. How is it like and how do you deal with any challenges whatsoever that comes with it? Every day yeah. after training we have mentorship. Mm -hmm. So in mentorship we have people who are already working or people who have worked at some point and those who are uh, now more advanced than the rest. Eh? So they come, we come together, all of us, and we share our experiences. So even if you have your doubts, and you come and listen to what other people have to say, and then maybe over that week about maybe two, three people got work, and you hear their, 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 you know, their testimony saying, oh, I did this, I did this, and now I have my first client, that actually alleviates doubt. And as for the believability of the amount of uh, money people are earning, like uh, you can even check the, the kind of people, uh, the good thing about Upwork, it's open. So if you, ch if you check me on Upwork, you will see how much I've earned on that platform mm. so far. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can check a lot of our, our people, a lot of our, uh, we call ourselves task managers. So you're able to track every task managers and where they are in their journey, those who are already working on Upwork. Amazing. Yeah. But why then did you decide to focus on um, women, moms for that matter? You know, a mom wears many hats. Yeah. I put myself, I'm also a mom. Yeah. And uh, 
a lot of moms were struggling, especially during COVID. A lot of moms were struggling. So I decided, let me just share my knowledge with the moms. And then at least to be able to, you know, there was a lot of struggling during COVID and the moms were really struggling. Mm -hmm. So I decided, let me share the opportunity with them. And then when the moms started succeeding, even yeah. the dads came in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they came in and now we started even mentoring and training dads. Yeah. And now we are training even youth. In Mombasa, I was a, I was a super mentor in uh, and one of the NGOs. I was mentoring their youth. Okay. How yeah. long do the, the trainings take? The training takes between two to three weeks. Uh, holding uh, factors like uh, blackout mm -hmm. and internet. Okay. Yeah, so it's supposed to, to last two weeks, but we always have an allowance of one week because of those factors beyond our control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Paint to mm -hmm. us a picture of how a typical day looks like for you. All right. Um, I wake up at five. I wake if I have slept at all. Yeah. Uh, but at five. Oh, really? There are yeah. days you go there are days I, I don't sleep at all at night. So it's more of a night job <laughs> yeah. than a daytime job? Yeah, I find myself working more at night. Okay. Yeah, but there are those who work at night throughout, yeah. by eight, I'm on my desk. And I, I have five clients, and I, I sign two hours every day to those clients mm -hmm. consistently. Okay? Mm -hmm. And in between, I have a mentorship. Uh, after that, I go and get my baby from school. After school, I just have time, enough time to bathe him, feed him. I go back to maybe if I have meetings. If there's work I've not finished, I finish. By eight on the dot, I'm in class. Okay, I'm in class. Yeah, sometimes I have two, two three classes. Right now I have, uh, I have uh, three classes. Uh, one is a Nigerian class. Uh, the, the rest two are Kenyan classes. Mm -hmm. And they follow each other back to back. After the, Nigeria, after the Nigerian class, which is at 10 to, to 11, I get into mentorship, Usikusako, mm -hmm. all the way so to, you call it. Yeah, yeah, Usikusako can go all the way up to three, two, one, depending on <laughs> the issue of the day. Mm -hmm. And then now I, if I have client meetings, I do the meetings at that time. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Looking back at um, what you know now, uh, mm -hmm. probably is there anything you would have done differently at the beginning? Yeah. 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 The, yeah I'm a lot. A lot. Mm -hmm. I have learned so much. I have grown so much, both in my journey as a virtual assistant and also as a trainer. Yeah. As a virtual assistant, uh, I okay. If I had known, I would have specialized earlier. But right now, I specialize in e-commerce. So if I if I had known about e-commerce, I would have specialized earlier because for one, e-commerce gives me flexibility. Mm -hmm. I work. I have the flexible flexibility to work when I want. You see? Mm -hmm. I can either work at night, I can either work during the day. Sometimes uh, I can tell the client today, I'm not available online. And they're okay. Yeah. As for the training, when I started training, I did not start teaching them the skills. I just taught them how to look for work. Mm -hmm. So up to from around cohort one all the way to cohort five, I didn't teach them the skills. I was just teach, teaching them how to look for work. Mm -hmm. Until one of the lady told us, Patricia, okay, you're doing very well. You're teaching us how to work yeah. and how to look for work. But what are we working on? We don't know how to work. So I decided, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I had to recall everybody back to class. Mm -hmm. I recalled all, all of them. I made one group, yeah. cohort six, and I called all of them back to class. Of course, there are those who already discouraged. They didn't come back. But the ones who came back, I taught them everything. And even right now, I keep on, when I learn something new, I have to go back to everybody and teach them. So it's a continuous learning process. As they grow, they grow. Uh, Patricia, are you telling us that um, there are job opportunities for women and, of course, the other people that want to do a virtual assistance in this field? The opportunities are endless. So many opportunities. Mm -hmm so so many and they keep growing every day so what i'm saying is that they, they can try on this other side kenya right now there's no work and the little opportunities that are there are so highly competitive and you know but on this other side if you work hard you will be able to get something to do and and well mm -hmm. yeah amazing yeah. perhaps speak a word of encouragement to the people that you've trained so far and the people that maybe have always had the thought of being VAs and they really don't know where to start or how to go about it. 
Well, I'll tell them it's not uh, it's not an easy journey. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, it's not something that you can do on the go. It's not uh, something that you can do as you you're watching because you're working from home. You're watching Netflix and you know and uh, meanwhile you're typing here and you know no no it's a lot of work. It's hard work. A lot of us have uh, suffer fatigue at some point, but I would tell them it is the best decision that I ever made. What are some of the challenges uh, that uh, you've experienced? Well, the challenges that I've experienced, one, yeah. there's no <laughs> social life. Social life is gone. Number two, uh, fatigue, as I said. Yeah. Number three, because you sit a lot, if you don't take care of your health, you will find that uh, you will start getting health complications. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, in the community, people don't really understand you. You don't understand this one, you know, you're just in the house, how are you paying your rent? Yeah. You know, it's, I've been called by a lot of uh, these, these leaders, uh, these leaders of the community, mm -hmm. yeah. wondering, where do you What's get up? your money from? Yeah, where oh, do you really? get your money? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is it too, but eventually they get it? Yeah, eventually they get it. Ah, so yeah. how do you recharge? When I was in Mombasa, it was easier. I could take a walk at the beach, yeah. and there's a lot of nightlife. So at some times, I could just walk all the way to the main road. I was living at the beach, so I could walk to the main road, and the, you know the, the malls are open. I just went to shop, and then I go back home. I take a walk. Now here in Nyeri, uh, there's really I'm still trying to find out what I, what I can do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, What's the one thing that you hold on to that really motivates you as a woman on the daily? Ah, uh, my children. Thank you so much, Patricia, for sharing your ideas and your beautiful story here thank on the you. show. It was nice to be here. Well, thank you so much also for joining us uh, on today's episode. This is Everyday Woman uh, here on KTN Home. Remember, you can catch this episode on our YouTube platforms. And of course, you can always stream the show live on Facebook and on Instagram. To the amazing crew, our editor Nicole, our producer Sarah, our cameraman um, Stanley, Alex, and uh, Charlotte, we thank you so much. Until next weekend, keep safe. Mm -hmm.